All right, what's up, Yu-Gi-Oh! players? But finally, we got some new Yu-Gi-Oh! cards. So let's go check them out. We actually have the V-Jump promo as well as, I think, a new archetype. But I want to actually kick it off with the promo as it was something that kind of hyped up. So this is Intermate uh, Sky Magician Girl or Performer Pal Sky Magician Girl. So it's a level 5 win spellcaster effect. 20 uh, or 2,000 attack. And then uh, 1,500 defense points. And it says that you can use each effect among the first and second and third effects of this card's name only once per turn. So the first part is you control a continuous spell, you can dispel someone this card from your hand. The second part is if this card is dispelled someone from the hand, you get to send one level four or lower light spellcaster monster from your deck to the graveyard. That's already the deck pretty good because it's like a foolish, has easy summon condition. And the third part is if this face of card leaves the field, you can target a spell or trap on the field and destroy it. Now what is interesting is whatever you threw up maybe to con have that continuous Maybe if you would pop it, you get some sort of bonus effect. I wish it was just that you could target one card in the field and destroy it. This would be actually super OP. But I still think that it has some potential. Definitely not a bad card. And I guess it does work with Magician Girl support because it counts as Magician Girl. Okay, that's a pretty cool thing. Obviously, it's meant for Pendulum. But I think someone will figure out how to make this uh, pretty decent. Maybe some other things. Uh, next up, though, we got some other newer cards. This is in uh, Rota over here. So this is... Okay, they're definitely going to be changing things. Badass Goblin Bikers. <laughs> <laughs> That's the actual name of the card. All right. So anyways, it is a level six Dark Fiend effect monster, 2400 attack, and it's got zero defense. It says you can only use the second and third effects of this card's name once per turn. So the first part is if you control no monsters or all monster control or goblin monsters, you can normal summon this card without tributing. Second part is if this card is normal or special, you get to special summon one level four or lower goblin monster from your deck. Well, that's a pretty good effect. Uh, and then the third effect is if this card is... Uh, sent to the graveyard, you get to target one card in the field and attach it to your goblin that exceeds monster as material. Okay, really good effect that it is one card on the field because you could target whatever you want. That could be your opponents, that could <clears throat> be maybe um, some stuff that would maybe get some sort of bonus if when it's sent to the graveyard or whatever. Uh, I like it. Pretty solid effect overall. And then, oh, we got more goblin support. So we got Goblin Biker Grand Imprisonment, which is a quick play spell card that says you can only use the first and second effects of this card's name each once per turn. The first part says to tribute one monster to special summon a goblin monster from your deck, <clears throat> but it cannot attack this turn. Second part is when a monster declares an attack, you can banish this card from your graveyard and detach any number of materials from your goblin exceeds monsters. All face of monster opponent control lose a thousand attack for each material detached until the end of this turn. Okay, so you can surprise them. You lose out your material, but you can basically run over stuff. I like that. Pretty good stuff indeed. And obviously goblin is meant to be an exceeds sort of a deck, so I mean this part effect won't maybe hurt you that much. Next up we got the Goblin Rider Die Pinch, or Goblin uh Biker, uh, Biker Grand Crisis over here. So here's the R on this uh, continuous trap card that says you can only use one of the first and second effects of this card's name per turn only one, uh, only that turn. Uh, the first part says you can target a goblin monster you control and one monster your opponent controls or one goblin monster in your graveyard and one monster in your opponent's graveyard and banish both. Second part is you can send this face up card from your spell and trap zone to the graveyard target then target five of your banished goblin monsters with different names and special summon. Wow, that's like return from the different dimension. That is a pretty solid uh, effect overall. Uh, I mean, this is literally a banned card. Uh, I, I like it though, it's pretty cool. And then on top of that, you get to banish your opponents, may uh, maybe a target that they would target with something like you know, Reborn or Bring Back or Add Back to the Hand. I think it's a pretty solid card overall. A lot of these though, like nowadays with Yu-Gi-Oh, uh, if you've already dumped five of your monsters into the grave and then also banished them, you, you probably should have won at this point. But uh, next up, uh, I don't know if this is a new archetype. Uh, this, this is also coming out in Rota over here. All right. So uh, I guess it's called the Azamina. Azamina Rea Silvria is the car card's name. This is a brand new fusion, uh, Dark Illusion, uh, level 6, 1900 attack, and 1500 uh, defense points. It requires an illusion monster plus one light spellcaster monster. It says you can only use the second and third effect of this card's name each once per turn. So the first part is any battle damage your uh, Az Azamina monsters other than Azamina Rea Silver inflict to your opponent is doubled. Second part is when your opponent activates a card or effect as a quick effect, you can tribute this card to negate that effect. The third effect is if this card is destroyed by battle or card effect, you get to add one sinful spoils trap from your deck turn. Oh, okay, so it's sinful spoils. And then next up we have Azamina Mu. Rusty I go? Okay. Anyways, uh, maybe it's a different translation error. Anyways, 2,000 attack, 24 defense points, and requires an illusion monster and one light spellcaster monster. So it says you can only use the first and third effects of this card's name 
each once per turn. So the first part is, if this card is Fusion Summon, you get to add an Azimina or a Sinful Spoils uh, card from your deck to your hand. Second part is, monsters your opponent controls lose 500 attack and events for each Azimina monster you control. And then, uh, third part is, if this card is destroyed by battle or a card effect, you get to add a Sinful Spoils spell from your deck to your hand. And then next up, um, we also have the Az Azmina Soul uh, Ares Sh Sh Shithon. So uh, it is going to be another fusion, 2700 attack. It's a dark illusion, uh, level six, and it requires an illusion monster and a fiend monster. So it says you can only use the first and second effect of this card's name each once per turn. So the first part is if it's fusion something, you can target one card in the field and send it to the graveyard. Second part is during each standby phase, you can target an Azmina or a Sinful Spoils card in your graveyard and add it to your hand. Okay. And then next up, we have the Azamina Moore uh, Regina, which is a fusion level eight, uh, 3000 attack, 2000 defense, dark illusion. And it requires a loose monster one plus one plus level six or higher fiend monster. And it says you can only use the first and second effects of this card's name each once per turn. So the first part is you can target one illusion monster in your graveyard, except for Azamina, Moore Regina, and special summon it. Second part is when a Sinful Spoils or Azamina card or effect is activated, except for Azamina Moa Regina as a quick effect, you can target up to two cards in the field and destroy them. Okay, that's a pretty solid effect overall, being the, the having the ability to bring back something else and on top of that, uh, target up to two cards and pop them. Uh, and then next up we have more support called the Scared Azamina. So this is a normal spell card that says you can only use the second effect of this card's name once per turn. So the first part is to reveal an Azamina fusion monster from your extra deck and send one Sinful Spoils card from your hand or, and or field to the graveyard for every four levels it has. If those cards are set, reveal them. Then special summon the revealed monster. This is treated as a fusion summon. Wow, that could be actually pretty good. Obviously, yeah, it has some condition here, but the second part is if this card is in your graveyard, you get to target one Azimina monster you control or in your graveyard, shuffle it into the deck. And if you do, add this card to your hand. So you can maybe dodge something if it would go away anyways. Um, and then uh, next up, we have the Azimina of Ophiliatus, which is a quick play spell card that says you can only use one of the first and second effects of this card's name per turn, only once that turn. So the first part says during the main phase, you get to reel up an Azamina fusion monster in your extra deck. And you get to send one sinful spoils card from your hand and or field to the graveyard for every four levels it has. If those cards are set, reveal them, then special summon the revealed monster. This is treated as a fusion summon. Second part is during your main phase, you could banish this card from your graveyard, then target an Azamina monster in your graveyard and special summon it. Okay. And then next up, we have we have more support. Dang, this archetype is uh, getting so much. Wait, hold on. Is it like the full thing? Okay, we only have a couple more. I was like, dude, this is crazy. How many, like, uh, I want to double check on this one real quick uh, over here. Uh, like, how many Azamina cards are this? This is, this is, as far as I'm aware of, oh, okay. It is, like, brand new. Uh, but it is kind of related to, I guess, the Sinful Spoils, which we can go over uh, that effect also. Uh, okay, so yeah, there is a okay, you know, there's 11 cards already because it was pretty much just Diabo. That's the card that I remember from that. And then obviously there's a couple other cards that people were using like Wanted, right? Uh, but uh, good stuff. Anyways, um, next up we were on uh, this one here. So Azmina uh, Hamartia, which is a normal trap, which says you can only use one of the first and second effects of this card's name per turn only once that turn. So the first part, you reveal an Azamina fusion monster in your extra deck and shuffle one sinful spoils card from your uh, graveyard and or banishment into the deck for every four levels it has. Uh, then special summon the real monster, it's treated as fusion summon. And the second part is you can banish this card from your graveyard, target a sinful spoils spell or trap in your graveyard, set it, but it can't be activated this turn. Uh, next up, we have a continuous spell called Sinful Spoils Deception. So it's a continuous spell that says you can only use the first, second, and third effect of this card's name each once per turn. So the first part says you tribute a monster from your hand or field to add an Azmina card from your deck to your hand. The second part is if a monster is sent to your opponent's graveyard and you control an Azmina monster, you can make your opponent lose 1500 life points, and if you do, gain 1500 life points. Third part of the effect is during the end phase, if this card is in your graveyard because it was sent there this turn from the face-up uh, face spell and trap zone, you can set it. Oh, okay. Um, I mean, that could be very interesting. The, the ability to actually just gain, like, the difference of 3,000 can be pretty good. Uh, there might be, what's it called, the Ancient Sacred Wyvern? Uh, you might be able to do some cool stuff with that if you have some room in the extra deck. Um, yeah, it, it could see some potential. I mean, like, sometimes this could be the difference between winning and losing a game. So that's very interesting. But I'm really curious to know, what are you guys' thoughts on, like, the uh, Asmina archetype? I, I mean, it's all, literally all, all fusion monsters, 
pretty much, and they're all, like, not too bad. I'm curious to see, see where this archetype goes, but that's gonna wrap up for the brand new Yu-Gi-Oh cards. Let me know your guys' thoughts, but I'm glad we finally have some new Yu-Gi-Oh cards, because it's been dry for a while. But anyways, if you guys enjoyed the video, drop a like on it. If you want to see maybe gameplay of this or some more stuff in the future, hit subscribe to the bell so you don't miss out, and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace out.